Hi guys. <coughs> it is a chilly <coughs> winter night, although I guess it's still the fall of 2020. Uh, but at least I'm not in New York. At least I'm not in uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York right now. Good Lord. Uh, so anyway, I am down in this undisclosed swamp here on this collapsing planet. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. And it is technically still Thursday night, December 17th, but it's close enough to Friday. Close enough to Friday, December 18th for me to uh, do what I try to do every Friday. I guess next Friday is Christmas and the Friday after that is New Year's Day. So this might be my last uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant of 2020 where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see what is on their minds as they bring us our weekly laundry list of insults against this collapsing planet while we're all still engrossed with the uh, temper tantrum from the two-year-old in chief. And uh, gee, I don't know uh, how many times have we had this story. You will not believe we're going to start off in Brazil like we all often do. Would you believe, guys, that Belo Monte Dam's water demands imperil the Amazon environment and communities? Who would have thought that the Belo Monte Dam was imperiling the Amazon? I think we've heard that about 500 times. Okay, let's go to the United Nations fail of the week. We have a fishing fail at the, uh, at the UN. This is actually a branch of the UN called the World Trade Organization. The WTO flunks deadline to end harmful fisheries subsidies by 2020. Wow. World Trade Organization member states missed a deadline to agree to curb harmful fisheries subsidies, part of the UN's sustainable development goals. We have missed another UN sustainable development goal. What a surprise. Yes. Uh, the missed deadline on one of the first major sustainable development targets may set a precedent for reaching future targets and raises questions about the WTO's ability to facilitate UN Sustainable Development Goals. Imagine that. The World Trade Organization. Huh. I cannot believe they would be suggesting uh, questioning the WTO's ability to facilitate <laughs> the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Guys, uh, I, I know most people listening to this think, think I'm talking gobbledygook. If you knew how funny this was. Uh, Jesus. Harmful subsidies fund otherwise economically impossible overfishing. Do you think so? And incentivize illegal, unreported, and unregulated practices contributing to the perilous state of global fish stocks. All right. You know, we're hearing all of this doom and gloom on Brazil's Cerrado Savannah. But uh, I guess we're now, we're going to save the Cerrado by spreading grass seed over it. Yes. 
scientists are now shifted, shifting their focus to restoring the native vegetation. However, <coughs> scientific knowledge on savanna restoration is scarce. Yes, it is. Let's wish them luck in planting their little grass seed on the Serrano. Okay. We had this very story last year about Brazilians' impact impacted by mining asserts genocide legalized by the state. Not sure why that's being repeated. And anyway, guys, I am very tired and I have a 250 mile round trip to make tomorrow. Uh, so I will only get to touch on a few of these before I climb in to my ice cold sleeping bag. We're going to go over to Madagascar. Madagascar, one of the poster children of a collapsing planet. What is going on in Madagascar as minister, meaning the, I'm sure the environmental minister, I'm guessing, an activist trade barbs Madagascar's forest burn. Forest fires are blazing across Madagascar, including in its protected areas to home to some of the world's rarest species from critically endangered lemurs to hundreds of endemic snails. There you go. Uh, more than 1,000 fires were reported in the Bethotaka Medongi National Park alone which is one of the largest stretches of evergreen forest left in Madagascar. Yes, a heated debate has erupted between environmental activists and the Madagascar Environment Ministry. That's kind of like the Sancho Panza Chipmunk Ministry. The, the Madagascar environment ministry that must be a <laughs> that must be a busy office yes wow let's go over to indonesia indonesia allows use of destructive seine and trawl nets in its waters again the indonesian government has lifted its ban on the use of seine and trawl nets, which marine conservationists and scientists have blamed for overfishing and damage to coastal reef to coastal reef ecosystems. Hmm. The policy was signed by the Fisheries Ministry a month before he was arrested for corruption in a separate case. Yes, marine observers have lambasted the new policy, saying it will only benefit large-scale fishers and put additional pressure on already exploited fishing grounds. Indonesia's, wa Indonesia's waters support some of the highest levels of marine biodiversity in the world. So there you go. You will not believe this, that this new report has found a litany of labor abuses on the Round Table for Sustainable Palm Oil Certified Oil Palm Plantations. Widespread labor abuses have been documented in five oil palm plantations in Indonesia, ranging from exposure to hazardous chemicals, uh, below minimum wage payments, blah, blah, blah. These plantations are, in theory, supposed to be role models for the industry, with RSPO sustainability certification. Hmm... 
and buyers that include the likes of food giant Nestle. Yes. Okay. What is going on over in Sumatra? We have tigers on the highway. The wildlife-rich island of Sumatra is experiencing a road-building boom causing some of its iconic creatures to be seen by construction workers, such as a photo of a Sumatran tiger crossing a highway work site. Less than 400 of these critically endangered animals now exist, and they need space, up to 250 square kilometers for each tiger's territory. Yes. Uh, there you go. 400 tigers getting ready to get run over in the road building boom. So we're going to go from Sumatran tigers getting run over to Sumatran elephants. On plantations and in protected areas, Sumatran elephants keep turning up dead. In Sumatra's Rial province, 93% of known elephant habitat is in forests where commercial and industrial activity is permitted. At least seven elephants have been found dead in pulp and paper concessions controlled by Asia Pulp and Paper. Do you think so? Uh, many elephants are believed to have been killed by poachers who activists say can easily enter and leave concession sites. Yes. Please note this article contains graphic descriptions and images that could be upsetting to some readers. Yes. Uh, okay, let's go back to the Amazon where lasers reveal steep decline in the ecosystem function of degraded Amazon forest. Large portions of the Amazon rainforest are now degraded by human activities, such as smallholder farming, timber extraction, and burning. Airborne laser scans show that these areas store less carbon, carry less water, and are much more fire prone. During periods of drought, intact forests also run out of water and become as hot as degraded forests, stress stressing the entire ecosystem. Okay, let's come over to our own country and look at the monarch butterflies. I was just reporting, when was it, a week ago, how the at least the western monarchs have completely collapsed. The population of western monarchs this year in the census is, is like, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm virtually 100% sure, is by far the lowest on record, that the, the monarchs are, are completely disappearing off, being obliterated off the face of the planet. And so, on the heels of this, what does the Trump administration, you know, so they had to decide whether to call monarch butterflies endangered species, you know, which could have caused all sorts of trouble with, uh, with all kinds of people. So, take a wild guess what this headline reads, a week after learning about the collapse of monarch populations, no endangered species listing for monarch butterflies as western count hits alarming low. The iconic monarch butterfly meets the criteria to be listed under the U.S. Endangered Species Act, 
but it will not be listed just yet because priority will be given to other species, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has announced. This leaves the monarch as a candidate species for possible listing in the future. Yes, uh, so my guess is it will be listed next year with Save the Planet uh, President Biden. Um, both eastern and western monarch populations are declining with this year's western monarch Thanksgiving count deemed alarming and expected to yield a final figure this year of fewer than 10,000 individual butterflies wintering in California, the smallest overwintering population on record. Um, under current conditions, the eastern monarch populations also have about a 50 to 70 percent chance of reaching a point at which their extinction is inevitable within the next 60 years. For Western monarchs, the chances are even higher that the chance now within the next 10 years, there is a 60 to 68 percent chance there will be no monarch butterflies left in the Western U.S. And within 60 years, there is a 99% chance that uh, Western monarchs will be extinct. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> let's go over to per Peru. You know, this oil palm is everywhere. An oil palm front advances on an indigenous community in Peru. Indigenous Shipibo leaders in Peru say they live under the threat of attacks from suspected land traffickers who continue to invade their territory. Uh, these invasions have been exacerbated by the advancement of oil palm plantations in the Peruvian Amazon. Uh, in August, an outside group of land grabbers was caught cutting down trees that belong to the indigenous community. There you go. Okay, we have an interesting uh, uh, interview here with someone I uh, can't pronounce, Tork Gel Lira. We are part of the solution and the problem. In his new book, The Fight for the Forest, social geographer Tork Gel Lira take stock of Norway's 40 years of relationship with the Brazilian Amazon. It's a paradoxical relationship. Uh, yes. Um, one in which Norway invests nearly a billion dollars in environmental conservation and about five times that much in environmentally destructive businesses. Yep, do you think so? One step forward, five steps back. Uh, here's this new study on second growth forest in the Amazon. Uh, which is too diff too technical to get into. Uh, okay, we just had one mention of Sumatran elephants, but here is the larger story of Sumatran elephants, and th this is such a classic. I'll I'll probably uh, this might have to be the uh, 
title story here. A forest in Sumatra disappears for farms and roads, and so do its elephants. The 15,300 hectare, otherwise known as the 38,000 acre Balai Raja Wildlife and Reserve in Sumatra's Rio province was established in 1986, you know, as a protected area and designated an elephant reserve in 1992. What would this be? 18 years later, by 2010, the 15,300 hectares uh, had now become less than 200 hectares, meaning less than 500 acres. 18 years after it was declared an elephant reserve uh, it, in the protected forest, it had dropped from 38,000 acres to less than 500 acres of intact forest remaining. The elephant herd, which still managed to number 25 in the year 2014, had dwindled to seven individual survivors in 2019. And I guess that's the latest that we have information on. Much of the protected forest was lost to oil palm plantations and smallholder agriculture. But official government, government buildings have also even been built within the reserve. And now the remaining elephant habitat for the last seven elephants, uh, the last 500 acres uh, out of the original 38,000 acres is threatened by a road construction project that in itself is mired in corruption. And right there is a snapshot of the planet at the end of 2020. Uh, all of the ingredients are there. It's all right there, guys. The, the, the very notion of protected areas, uh, has it, it, it is a sick, twisted joke. It means nothing. All of these little green, light green splotches you see all over maps, they don't mean a damn thing. It is to lull clueless morons into believing that these lands are protected. It's bullshit, people. Do you get it? It's bullshit. National parks, wildlife reserves, you know, the mainstream media doing a thing on Trump's border wall today, showing pictures of protected areas right here uh, in the United States, you know, on the U.S.-Mexico border with this damn border wall slamming right through these protected areas. It means nothing. Let's go back to some other hydroelectric dam. This is the Sinop hydroelectric dam on the Teles Pires River in the Brazilian Amazon. Has been operating for more than a year, but Residents affected by the project are still holding out for fair compensation for the environmental and social impacts. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> independent appraisals indicate that the dam's operator paid residents one-sixth of their fair value of their land with no room for negotiation. In addition, low water levels in the river have resulted in mass fish die-offs and the flourishing of disease-bearing mosquitoes. And uh, the company is owned 
by a French utility and is being held up as an example of the type of overseas investment that should be monitored more closely by European regulators. Yep. Okay, guys, you are not going to believe this. Uh, Brazil beef giants linked to illegal Amazon deforestation. Wow. Brazil's biggest beef companies have been directly linked to more than 17,000 hectares, otherwise known as 42,000 acres of illegal deforestation in the Amazon state of Pará. Yep, yep, yep. Brazil has the second largest cattle herd in the world, which is the leading driver of deforestation emissions in Latin America, and it is the main reason I do not eat beef. Okay. <clears throat> it's time to redefine business to save the planet. Yes. Humanity must make an evolutionary leap from a consumer species to a restorer species and business, meaning corporations, can lead the evolutionary leap. Yes, it, it is the global corporatocracy that is going to take humans on an evolutionary leap from being consumers, you know, of the products that the global corporatocracy make to restoring the planet. With current statistics showing the loss of nature at 68% globally since 1970, it is clear that we are not trying hard enough. Not all of us. We're waiting for someone else to solve this problem, abdicating responsibility on us. Uh, this is a commentary by Claire Dubois, whoever this is, and uh, quoting Claire, quote, if, there w if ever there was a moment to discover what we, meaning humans, are actually capable of, it is now. Because this is not what humanity evolved for. Our ancestors did not fight to live just for us to shop ourselves into extinction. There you go. Okay, I think we mentioned this, but it might have been another country last year. Sri Lanka activists decry downgrade of non-protected other forest by government. Now we're talking about non-protected forest. The Sri Lankan government earlier this year transferred the administration of non-protected forest, known as other state forest, to regional authorities with a view to releasing them for agriculture and development. The move is part of the government's efforts to boost domestic food production, you know, to feed its skyrocketing population, but has been blasted by environmental activists who say that many of these forests are still rich in biodiversity and serve important ecosystem functions. Many of the forests serve as watershed for rivers, Others harbor newly described species found nowhere else on Earth. 70% of Sri Lanka's elephants live in these forests, which means that allowing them to be cleared for agriculture would exacerbate what is already one of the world's worst problems of human-elephant 
conflict. All right, guys, one more. We're, did we start in Brazil? Uh, we're going to end up in Brazil because I got to call it a night. It's it's freeze, literally freezing in the swamp tonight, and I got to get some sleep. And so we're going to wind up uh, in the Brazilian Amazon right where we started, where we see Brazil's hyacinth blue macaws and golden lion tamarins, which I think are a monkey, are back in wildlife trafficker sites. Conservationists working with the hyacinth macaw and the golden lion tamarin say there has been a worrying increase in trafficking of both of these species that are emblematic of Brazil's biodiversity. Trafficking nearly wiped out these species as far back as the 1980s, but intensive conservation programs have managed to claw back the populations of the macaw and the monkey, respectively. Yes, uh, they're looking at a smuggling route to China via Paraguay. It's not clear what is driving the uptick in trafficking of the golden lion tamarin, but experts point to a confluence of economic crisis. You can guess what that is. Weakened environmental agencies. You can figure out why those environmental agencies have been weakened and poor monitoring, and uh, I remember in my uh, book that Peruvian plunge uh, down there in the Peru, about my adventures in the Peruvian Amazon, I have a, uh, a cameo appearance by a golden lion tamarind, and I have to admit, it, it kind of looks like a cross. It looks a lot like Sancho Panza. Come here. I want to see. You can see what a golden lion. It's amazing. Are you a golden lion tamarind? Is that what you are? I might actually be uh, heading to St. Croix here in the next week or two. Uh, we're trying to spring another Sancho Panza dog from uh, the St. Croix Animal Shelter. So wish us luck on that latest adventure to get another Sancho over here. But anyway, guys, I got to wrap this up and uh, get some sleep. So uh, get out there and uh, enjoy the what is it the last three days of the fall of 2020 and it has been a hell of a rocket ride in the fall of 2020 can't wait to see what 2021 has to bring but i'm sure rhett butler and the boys and girls at manga bay will be chronicling the collapse of a planet next year. Bye, guys.